to spend some time with you today uh, with a video that's going to show you some tips on how to raise spiderlings. In particular, this past year I've been working with the Phytopus Audix uh, spiderlings and uh, trying to find ways to take care of them. I had three females all at the same time, had eggs, and uh, it's been quite a fiasco to try to keep them all clean and keep the babies fed. And I've learned a lot from you guys out there. It gave me a lot of good tips. And also, um, I picked up some tips along the way too, just out of necessity. I'm going to share some of those tips that I've learned that uh, you might want to use if you ever have some uh, spiderlings, uh, some slings of your own you're trying to raise. Maybe you've never done this before, like I had, hadn't done, and maybe you can pick up some good tips. So I'm going to show you some of the things I've done. And uh, let me, before we start, I want to show you my shirt here that my son got me. Uh, well, I know I'm getting older, but this is ridiculous. Look what he gave me here, this shirt here. Uh, look what it says on the back of the shirt. The first thing I had to do when I had my uh, spiderlings and I had three females all at the same time giving birth, uh, their eggs were hatching, I had to find a way to take care of them. And when I first started, this, this one does have a live female in it. She's right now in her, her little web nest here. But um, uh, it's hard to keep them in these. Once the little spiderlings uh, or the slings begin to develop and get bigger, they come out of the nest and they're all over the jar. And it's very difficult to try to get food in um, and without having them escape out. So what I did was uh, I went to uh, our local Walmart store here in the United States and I purchased uh, out of their pharmacy department something called a seven day pill planner. And uh, what it is, is that it only costs six dollars and twenty four cents and what it is it's designed it has four rows of being able to uh, put your pills in here uh, which contains let's see it's one two three four five six seven times four there's twenty eight little containers each container you push the little purple tab here and it pops open you can take your pill out well in this case I'm using this to hold these little spiderlings at least the ones that uh, I'm growing and, and uh, taking care of and then you just close that down and, and it snaps back down so uh, I'm going to show you what I did or how I put these spiderlings in and explain why I thought this was a really good thing to do at least in trying to separate them out and take care of them as they grow. You can see I've already uh, put some of these uh, spiderlings inside these pill cases here. Uh, once in a while you'll see one roaming around like in that box there. And um, what I find very interesting about this is that it's, it's easy to keep them clean and to feed them. And here's why. I'll transfer some of my spiders that I've, spiderlings that I haven't put in here yet. And you can see, see how easy this works. So what I do I get myself uh, one of the containers and we'll open up this first one here, Mark Sunday bedtime. We'll open up that little container and then I take my uh, jar of my spiderlings here and I'm just going to fish one of these babies out of here. And I got the spiderling on the stick which you can see and I'm just going to transfer it into the container here. There we go. Get that one down in there and then all you have to do is snap the little lid closed and that's locked right in there. Then you just proceed to the next one. Pop that little baby open. Find yourself another sling. Here's one anxious to come out right here on top of my jar. And let's see. Oh, he's a fast one. Let's see if we can get this one to cooperate a little bit on the stick. We'll get this one transferred right in there just as easy as cake and snap that one down number two etc so you continue on until you get to all your your uh, cases loaded there you saw me messing around with a little stick here which I've uh, I use quite often and here here's a little tip I'll share with you that I found to be very helpful um, I picked up a, a little bag of extra long bamboo skewers, the kind you use to make uh, shish kebabs on the grill. And uh, I find these to be, they come to a nice point on the end, and I find they're very helpful when you have to take uh, one of your jars uh, with your spiderlings in and your female, and it gets full of crud. And uh, this to me is an easy way to roam around inside that jar pull out that crud and uh, flake it off or put it off on a napkin or something. They're also very handy as you saw me working with the uh, 
with the spiderlings and transferring them from one jar into these little containers or wherever you're planning to transfer them well, to. Let's demonstrate uh, how you how I feed these uh, little slings in the uh, little pill box that I've showed you and how simple that is. Now when your spiderlings or slings reach the uh, certain size where you can begin to feed them uh, pet shop uh, uh, fruit flies, these are the wing, they actually have wings, but they don't fly. They're kind of titled uh, fruit flies with, uh, they call them wingless, but they do have wings. However, they just, they don't know how to use them. They're not bred for that. Um, I have a couple different stocks here. One is the uh, little larger fruit flies, and these are brand new little uh, fruit flies. What I usually do is, so I don't get just too many out and flying around or moving around all over the place, I try to open up the case in such a way where I pull out the little foam piece just a little ways, push it down with my thumb, and then when one starts to come out, I let the foam piece go back so it kind of grabs it there between the plastic and the foam plug. Then all I do is I open up the case I want to uh, feed a uh, fruit fly too, and what I find nice about these cases, the spiderlings tend to t stay right at the top of the lid. So when I open it, they just stay put. Then all I do is push down on that foam piece again, and let that one particular fly come out. You can see he's out here walking around the foam piece. And then I just uh, flick him in there, close the door, and it's all done. Pretty simple. I want to show quick. you the, what I did earlier on to take care of uh, keeping mother and, and and slings in the jar so that they wouldn't escape. Um, I took um, I took a nylon stocking of my wife's, which she volunteered to me, and uh, cut off an end of it. Uh, you tie it in a little bit of a knot, and uh, that works quite well as far as being able to stretch that over a jar top, and it allows it to be very breathable, but um, also keeps the baby spiderlings in, and mama as well. One of the drawbacks to this, which I don't use a whole lot anymore, is that uh, uh, mother and sometimes babies like to go to the top and uh, make their little uh, web retreat nest in which they stay in. And of course, when you go to pull off the top, the little web nests uh, come sometimes off with the top. So in that sense, not very practical, but it does work as far as allowing them to breathe in a particular jar or container. Another thing you're going to want to have is some kind of a misting jar so you can uh, mist your spiderlings as they molt. They'll need to have uh, some humidity. Sometimes I've used little pieces of sponge, but uh, those tend to get full of bacteria and uh, uh, hard to keep them clean and, and, and uh, free of bacteria. So a little spray in the bottle once in a while with a little mist seems to go very well for their molting process. Now there's one thing I have used that's been very helpful. A friend of mine on YouTube suggested a pooper. I didn't know what that was. It sounded kind of strange. So I looked it up and it's an apparatus that uh, you can use to uh, catch little small insects or in what I use it for is spiderlings. And it's a very simple procedure. The bigger ones, of course, are used with a jar and a couple different in input outputs. But uh, for emergency cases, this works extremely well. It's just a plastic soda straw. And on the end of it, we stretched um, some of this nylon stocking material over the end, pulled it nice and taut, and then put tape around it to hold it in place on the end of the straw. Now what this does is, I don't know if you can get an idea, you can see this up close a little bit better here, just a regular straw with that uh, netting, uh, nylon netting at the top. Now it, it has spared me spider control, spiderling control many times because when I try to get into a jar that's got a lot of spiderlings in to put some food in, uh, you know, I get some food in, about five or six of them try to escape out. And of course they're running around all over the place and it's disastrous trying to pick up these little spiderlings without hurting them. So this works amazingly well. All you do is stick it in your mouth, give it a good inhale, uh, inhale a good stiff suck in and you'll suck that little baby spiraling right up inside this tube. It stops at the netting so you don't choke on them and then you just have to put them where you want them and blow out and it goes right to wherever you're setting the spiraling and it doesn't hurt them at all. There's no blowout <laughs> too, too hard. Well, here's what I do. Take my little Hooper scooper <laughs> and uh, stick it in my mouth. You want to stick, make sure you get the uh, nylon end in your mouth and give it a good suck. See if you can see this. Spiderling is now in my tube. 
and then you can of course put it back out there you go blew it out and there's my little spiraling right there on my hand so nice little tool again invaluable I think well uh, enjoy and thanks for watching today I'm gonna head off and look around and see what I can find around my yard as far as spiders are concerned have a great day take care